Zohovich's magic, he wears a magic hat. He's back, he is back with me in Football Manager, LZ90. Get the hashtags ready. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome back to the NK Zagreb Save. I am Cultured Left Foot and we have Luka Zahovic. Man, I probably shouldn't have bought him, but we've got him in. I finally negotiated a deal with NK Maribor to bring him in. Um, he was there for absolutely ages, but we bought him in for £850,000. Um, I mean, he's had a very good track record throughout his whole career. And I think those of you that followed the Maribor save, the amount of times I sold him because the offer was too good to refuse, then bought him back cheaper, then sold him again because it was an offer too good to refuse, then bought him back again. Um, he's he's here. He's in. I mean, he's got an all-round decent stats, to be honest. He's not rated very highly. We're paying him far too much money. But it's great, isn't it? Lukas Zahovic is back. Um, I'm not too sure why he's got two negatives already. Lack of support. He may lack support as a result of not being part of any social group. Okay, that will change. There's no stronger that's called support with manager, which remains at an excellent level. So that won't matter either. Um, but yeah, he's he's in. A very good reputation, very high ability in the club. Uh, highly recommended. I like the fact that he can play on either wings and in the attacking field if we need it. We've had a change of formation and he actually fits it quite nicely out on this left-hand side. Or as a striker. Um... Yeah, very good. We've also had uh, a lot to talk about. It's going to be one game in this episode because we're playing Dynamo Zagreb and it is a top-of-the-table clash. Um, let's go into the schedule. That's probably the best way to do it. We were last together all the way back here for the game against Valencia where we lost 4-0. We played a hell of a lot of games. I knew so I said I'd come back for that cup semi-final. Um, I was on a roll and I just played it because I didn't want to stop and set up my equipment for recording and then potentially you know when you're on a roll of wins and unbeaten streaks and you don't want to stop playing and things like that so yeah we haven't lost in 21 league games i think it is our current unbeaten stretch in the league um our last loss in the league was there uh back in august is that august the eighth yeah uh, at the end of August, we've been unbeaten in the league since then, and that does nicely see us at the top of the table. Two points ahead of Dynamo, who we play today. Um, we've done our last game against them. We beat them in the Cup semi-final 3-1. A very interesting game because there was um, international call-ups. Because Dynamo did really well in Europe, they got through to the second knockout round of the Europa League. Um, their fixtures were completely messed up. So the only time they could play the Croatia Cup semi-final was during an international break, which meant that they lost more people than us from their first team. As you can see here, there are a few names in there that you won't recognise. Wildsmith, uh, Selly, um, I think are the two that are new signings in there. They, We lost a couple of people. They lost like four first team players, including their starting striker, their starting centre-back and their starting central midfielder. So... Yeah, we took great advantage of that and got a 3-1 win. Could have been 3-0. We conceded a 90-second minute goal. No one fancied their clean sheet bonus, so that's fine. Um, but other games, key standout games we've had. Um, drew 1-1 with Dynamo. Three draws in a row was pretty poor. Um, straight after winter, we just couldn't settle. 4-2 uh, win over Gorica was really good. 2-0 over Osiek. 2-2 draw with Hayduk. Um was good. Could have been a lot better, though, because I think we deserve to win. Uh, Locomotiva, we won 2-0. Rijeka 1-0 was pretty simple. The semi-final we've already talked about. We had a 4-0 win against Salavan Belupo, which was very, very nice. And we've just drawn 0-0 with Luka, who we're going to be playing in the cup final. They've been a bit of a bugger for us to play, really. They're just so defensive that we can't seem to break them down. 0-0 in the last league game. 1-1 before that. Um there and we must have played them again Luco there 2-2 so I'd get your money on the um, cup final going to penalties because we just can't seem to beat them I mean if we go in and look at the game stats match stats 36 shots 15 on target their goalkeeper got man in the match and we couldn't bloody win He's, he played for us we sold him to Osiek I remember he was one of the first players I ever sold so if we had 36 shots in that 0-0 in the 1-1 we had uh, 18 shots and 9 of them on target. Um, the game before that, in the 2-2 draw, 
we had 16 shots, 10 of them on target, and only scored two goals. So they've found a way of stopping us scoring goals, which has been actually a problem. We've kept loads of clean... Defensively, we've been really good. Scoring goals has been a bit of an issue recently, but we seem to have come through our problems and are doing okay. Hopefully, though... <sighs> And no, I shouldn't make predictions. I think if we win this game, we've won the league. I honestly think if we win this game, we've won the league. And then we'll be back for the cup final, where hopefully the league will be wrapped up by the time we beat Hey Duke. But, yeah, it's been going unbelievable. Even Vinko Peritin has scored a goal, finally, this season. He's finally scored. He scored in the 4-0 win against Slaven Blupo. He's got one goal in 12 appearances. He is now not very good. Uh, he peaked there. 22 goals in 28 games. It was just absolutely incredible. And now he's just not scoring goals at all. He's really dropped off the pace. I mean, yeah, well, we'll get on to possible reasons why in a minute. But let's have a look at the transfers. We are now starting to spend money, which is great. If you saw that finance screen, yeah, we're well over our wage budget. But they're going to give us loads of money next year because of the money from the Champions League. And it's likely we're going to qualify for the Champions League again. So, yeah, right. Sells out. Uh, uh, where were we? I don't know if you knew this, but uh, Sikovic, the really good centre-back we had, he moved to uh, AC Milan for £1.6 They paid his release fee. They signed him off us. Uh, he was doing very well, but I couldn't do anything about it. It was his release fee that was met, and he has gone. So that's a bit of a shame. Uh, lots of loanies out again. Then in the winter, we sold Mohamed Sihita to Inter Sapleski. He was one of the guys that came from America. So we made a little bit of profit on him. Uh, which is good. And then Carlo Babic came uh, into us from America as well, the Cedar Stars Academy. We got him a free. He played two years at the under-23s. Not really doing brilliantly. The second season, he scored eight goals in 19 games. No, that's terrible math. 17 games. Uh, he did pretty well average, but it never looked like he was going to break into the team. So we've sold him uh, for £10,000. Could potentially come back to kick us in the arse, but I don't think he's going to really amount to anything spectacular. Um, on the ins, well, actually, before we get to the ins, this has been one of our problems for not being able to score goals. He's broken his leg. Uh, he got his leg broken in training, which was really annoying. He is unbelievably good. Our game just fell apart when he got injured. He was on record. I think he was going to be on point to be one of the best strikers I've ever had in Football Manager in terms of goals to game stats in the whole season. Um, he's still our club's top goal scorer with 14 goals, yet he hasn't played football for when did he do it in training uh he's been out for two months so we've had two months for someone to try and take over him in goal scoring and they haven't been able to do it that's how bad our strikers have pretty much been but we've got Zahovic. there's nothing to worry about now um we've got who else have we bought in so i think you saw most of these most of these were youngsters anyway um alexander Pena is a striker that we've bought in Pena is how i think you say it Pena, but um yeah, he's going to be pretty good, I think. He's uh, a pressing forward. We use him if we change to a 4-4-2 and we need a bit more pressure on their back line. Then we bring him in. He's only made five appearances in the league, but he has scored. So he already matches Vinko Peritin in half the games. At 150k, he's definitely, if we sell him, he's definitely going to go for more than that because he's got good potential. He's already a Costa Rican international. Very, very happy with him. Um, Ibrahim Asare, I think we saw him come in last time as well. But yeah, just to let you see him again. He's made a couple of appearances. He's struggling for first team action, but I'm sure his time will come eventually. Uh, Morgan Gibbs-White joined on loan on deadline day. I think he joined in on the 22nd. Um, and then, because the deadline closes, but you're still allowed to sign people, I think it's the Inter-Croatia deals are closed. Um, we bought in Alessandro Celli, or Celli, from Pescara in Italy. And he is just straight into our centre-backs. Um, he's the best centre-back we've got at the club. Eight appearances, one goal, 7.43 average rating. Very, very nice indeed. We're paying quite a lot of money to have him on loan, but it's really worth it. Um... Veselinovic is a centre-back who joined us for 375k. He is basically the other centre-back that we play. Um, again, started with the club really well. Looking forward to seeing how he grows. Only 21, so I think he'll be pretty good. Then, um, I was getting quite pissed off with Iasov, so I went around looking for a goalkeeper and found this guy. And Joe Wildsmith, who costing us a bit of a fortune, um, has come in on loan, 525k overall cost. But when you have six appearances and you keep six clean sheets, it sort of shows that you're probably slightly too good for this level. But yeah, very happy with him coming in. And just to show you why 
Um, I went for this guy because if you compare him to Aesop, who, is, who was our best goalkeeper, his thing outdoes Aesop in everything apart from mental, which I don't really mind. He is a little bit more eccentric, but allows him to be a sweeper keeper um, slightly better. But yeah, he's a much better goalkeeper than Aesop, which is good. However, he's only on loan, and I can already tell you he won't be our goalkeeper next year because there's another goalkeeper coming in, hopefully. Um, and then Luka Zahovic has joined as well. So we are starting to spend a bit of money um, whilst also recouping it as well because of the the youngsters we bring in, we generally can sell for quite a lot of money. Um, but if we go to the transfer centre here, uh, you can also see that uh, Pedro Mosquera is coming in, hopefully, from Colombia. Um, oh yeah, it's already been agreed. So the 25th of the 5th, he'll be joining us which is good. He will be our first choice goalkeeper next season. I'm really looking forward to seeing him, see what he can do. Um, and I just generally think he'll be okay. 24 years old, okay when he's been playing for Medellin in Colombia, but I think he'll be good enough at our, at our level to play. Um, and then we've got a few outs going. McKellar's joining on a free transfer to Solin. Jonas Bagger's joining Maribor for £20,000 plus a 30% of next fee. I think, and Zivkovic, who would have been playing quite a lot more for us if he hadn't agreed to move basically as soon as he got into our first team, then, yeah, he's he's off. Um, he's going as well. Uh, on the ends, the other ones we've got is just some youngsters again. Justin Curley joins him from the Cincinnati Academy. I think by the time he joins, he will already be too shit to be anywhere near our team. And, and David Rogers is someone who I'm quite keen to see progress. We got, um, we well, uh, he got recommended to me, so I don't know how he got a, hasn't got a scout report. But uh, good dribbling, decent finishing, good bravery, composure, off the ball's okay, stamina, pace, natural fitness, balance, all pretty good. Um, he just gives another option, and again, I think we'll be able to sell him if if he doesn't make any football for us, really. If he doesn't play any sort of football. But that's an update in that. I don't think that we're... The new formation we're playing is this. We've dropped from the attacking midfielder to a holding midfielder, which I think has made us that defensively solid unit that we need. Um, we're conceding a lot less goals. Now, Look, uh, we'll watch this game and we'll probably concede five or six to Dynamo. Um, we play with an inside forward and we overlap on one side or the other so we, we can change it from left to right rather than doing both and leaving us open at the back. We uh, go through and change it. So at the moment we have Zerga on the wing and we're playing Grigon out there. But we can play uh, Knezovic in on the left and bring on Grigon or Gibbs White or Wilshire or one of the strikers like Zahovic or something like that um, who can play as an inside forward here and then we'll push Skulak running over. You might be wondering where Baru's gone. He is still here but uh, he'll be back in the first team for this game but he started to moan that we didn't sell him to Spartak Moscow but they never paid his minimum fee release clause which is exactly why it's there and uh, if they weren't willing to match it I wasn't willing to sell him so he'll be back but he's got over that now because Spartak Moscow have cancelled their interest in him so he'll be back in the first team for the next game potentially I don't know that might be a bit harsh on Skulak to drop Skulak because he's been playing uh, pretty damn well himself to be honest if we look at his last bit of form which is always a good thing to keep an eye on um, yeah his last few ratings so 6.9 6.7 8.5 6.8 .8. so not too bad at all I don't know maybe we'll stick with Skulak for this game I did sign him to be my first choice right back but Mm, it's not really worked out that way. He's sort of shared half and half. Um, our club is increasing again in numbers. I think there will be a bit of a cull this summer, especially if we're going back into Europe. And we're now definitely in the top three Croatian football teams uh, in the first division. It's, it's us, Dynamo and Heyduk, fighting out for the title. Um, Heyduk are dropping off the pace a bit. Dynamo have come from nowhere ever since they appointed. They lost their manager to... Uh, he went to manage a bigger club in Europe. And uh, Xavi Alonso took over, and he's been having them in superb form, to be honest. Right, Jack Wilsh is going to come off the bench and be replaced by um, Josh De Silva, who misses out because he's been away on international duty. But again, superb. Every single transfer window, he's had Reading make a bid for him, and they've never given me enough money. I said, I think in my head, I was like, if they offer a million, that'll be that, will be that, and he'll go. Um... I've also offered a new contract to Jack Wilshire to try and keep him around, but he rejected it because I wanted him to take a, uh, I wanted him to take a 50% wage cut from 4k to 2k a week, and he said, "Hell no, that's not happening." Um, but he also wants to commit his future to the club, so I don't understand what his thought process is because I wanted to keep him around for tutoring, mentoring. Um, his mentors are really good stats; he can still do a job for us, but he didn't want to take a pay cut, so. 
he's not going to be around. Uh, Aaron Ramsey is he got his automatic contract extension and he's actually done very well for us. He just loves a banger from range. He just loves a shot from range. It's really, really good. So he's going to play today in the middle. Joshua Silva's going to be on the bench. Musa sits into the anchorman role that we play to help out the midfield. Uh, Wildsmith, Skulak, Celi, Vasilovic, who we've looked at. Ramic starts at left back, although Gianucci is back. He's been injured for a while, and he is back. Do I put him in? It's a big game, and he is so much better than Ramic. He really is a much better than Ramic. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to put Gianucci in there because he prefers to attack as well. Uh, Guigon will start on the left wing inside forward role. Uh, Meite starts up front and Zerga on the right leaving Zahovic on the bench to probably come on for his debut. Maybe in that inside forward role or up front I'm undecided yet. So we'll hand that over to the assistant to and tell the guys how they're going to be playing in the game. I'm trying to get in this guy, um, Elise from West Ham, who's very keen to move for us. I'm very keen to sign him. I just have nowhere near the budget to go and buy him. Um, even before the Zahovic transfer, I had no, no chance of purchasing him. But he's been pretty solid. I think he's never really been given a chance. He looks like the sort of player would absolutely dominate uh, in the back for us in Croatia. So, yeah, we're going to be keeping an eye on him. And we've got scouts looking at him, so we're feeding like press stories about how much we want to sign him, and he's our number one target and all that stuff. And hey, Duke lost. Ooh, that should. So that we're now the only team that's already qualified for Europe, and there's still like what ten games to go or something. Um, so we're two points ahead of Dynamo. We play them today, and hey, Duke are really dropping off the pace now. Having played a game extra, they find themselves six points off us at the top of the table. So. It's going to be interesting, but yeah, we'll go into the Dynamo game. We'll go on to key highlights because we're only going to do one game in this episode. I really hope you're enjoying it. If you are, please do leave a comment, leave a like. If you're not enjoying it, leave a dislike. Um, everything helps me to understand why. If you're not liking it, it was really helpful to tell me in the comments what I can do to improve. Um, if you are enjoying it, leave me in the comments about what you're enjoying about this save the most. That would be really, really good. And yeah. <sighs> LZ90. LZ90. I'm so happy he's back. Um, I play six aside football every Wednesday, and one of the teams, we split into four teams. Um, we get like, is it four teams? Yeah, four teams. 25 players are there, and we have um, one of the teams plays in yellow, and I can't wait till I'm on the yellow team so I can rock out that NK Maribor kit. Um, but yeah, so let's get into the game. I've been apps. I've been rambling for nearly 20 minutes, so I don't know if I'm going to cut some of this out. A squad number needs to be given. His preferred number is 11. No, no, no. LZ90. There he is. Um, so if you're wondering why the title has hashtag LZ90 and you had no idea what that means, now you know. Uh, we're going to try and mark McQueen out of the game. He is their uh, key playmaking man. So that's what we're going to go for. I'm going to say assertively. Let's go out there. Um, and do, I want to say do this for the fans. Why can't I say do it for the fans? I want to say do it for the fans. With the underdogs. Go and give the fans a performance to cheer for. Passionately I have faith. Passionately I have faith. Passionately I have faith. So yeah, everybody's looking very, very good and very up for it. Which is wonderful. Mokawina will be tightly marked. He will be pressurised and he will be tackled very, very hard. If we keep him quiet... There's a good chance we win the game. Uh, we just need to press play. We need to up this onto extended because we're going to live dangerously. We're actually going to drop down to balance. They're a bigger, better team than us. So I don't think we need to um, really go for it like we do against the smaller teams. And Lozano puts them 1-0 up after two minutes. That is disappointing. So we're actually going to up it straight away to positive because we're 1-0 down. Lozano, they put two men over the ball. Lozano hit it. Looked like he hit it like quickly as if the goalkeeper wasn't expecting it. And it flies into the roof of the net. And that is not the start we wanted. But Skulak has a throw. Finds Musa. Gives it to Zerga. Zerga puts across and comes to it. Arejo shoots his block. Ramsey shot and it's blocked. And Lozano can potentially come forward on the counter-attack. And he runs and runs and runs. And that's a good tackle from Selly. No, it's not. It's a foul. And what's this going to be? If this is okay, it's a yellow. That's okay. It's not a red card. That would have been disastrous to be down to a red card within f down to from ten men and a goal down inside like ten minutes, five minutes, four minutes would have been absolutely dreadful. But we've had two shots. We're inspired. Let's see how we do. Throw in in the left back position. Ganucci throws it in, but Daka intercepts the ball first. He comes forward, lays it into Lozano onto his right foot. He hits the post. 
and it's cleared away for a throw in and uh, they are looking dangerous and like they're up for this game here Dynamo Zagreb that's a good header away Zerga tries to keep it in and does he has got the striker in front of him in Matey but Zerga's going all the way down the right hand wing crosses it in towards the back post Squeegon with a header and he can't get it on target I'm going to go up to attacking I just think we need to try and force the issue of it here because we're creating we're even on shots possession they've had a bit more than us we just need to get shots on target and maybe putting a few men forward, giving the encouragement to Ramsey and Arejo to push forward a little bit more would help. The issue we've got is that Ganucci's not playing well. I should have stuck with Ramage, but here's Musa. Plays it short into Zerga, who lays it out to the edge to Arejo. Shot from range. Really easy for Barea to see that all the way. Now, Barea is a goalkeeper that we were both going for, and he picked Dino Zagreb over us, and they've made it 2-0 at the near post. Damn it, that is annoying. This is going to be a tough game to get back into. I know we are we are behind them still in class and the amount we can pay people and the signings we can make, but we can we can match them. Zerga into the box shoots, but Aya makes the save, but only puts it behind for a corner. And uh, there should be a short option on again, and there is. And it's Musa should take this short. It should be Skulak. It is Skulak there. Crosses it in. It's bouncing around. Zerga onto his left foot, fires it in. 2-1. 2-1 and we are back in the game. His eighth goal of the season there from Zerga. The assist from Andre Skulak at right back. And uh, a good little set-piece goal. Musa plays it here. Skulak fires it low across the goal. Zerga pounces on the ping-pong ball. And uh, from that range, he gives the goalkeeper Barea absolutely no chance. And it's 2-1. So it's good. It's all right. Game on. Game on. Daka back to Gluhak into Gomez. We've got two teams just absolutely attack, attack, attack in this game. That's a woeful shot from Daka. But both teams are determined to score goals. And that is the best thing for football when you have a game like that. Okay, into half time. 2-1 down. Not too bad, I'm going to say. I'm going to say you've been unlucky. They like that. They like that a lot. We are going to make a sub. Um, De Silva's going to come for Ganucci at the fullback position. And we're going to leave the overlap there. But I think for the time I could put Zahovic up front. Or do I bring him on? Because my options on the left wing is that I change it to Knezovic and put the right hand side as a inside forward. But I don't do that because Zerga and Skulak are playing well. I mean, he's got an assist for a, Skulak got an assist for a Zerga goal, even though it was from a set piece. Uh, Ramsey's not having a great game. Um, I think I'm going to leave it. <laughs> After all of that, I'm going to leave it for a little bit, a little bit longer, just to see if the half time team talk. Makes them play a little bit better. And we are on the attack straight away. Zerga comes forward. Good tackle from Novak. And he'll pick up the ball as well. Lozano. Yeah, we just need to penetrate that little bit more. I'm tempted to tell Ramsey that he can run on. But he should do that naturally. Because if he's got the PPM, likes to get forward whenever possible. What the fuck is happening there? And Wildsmith makes a great save from Daka. And it just sort of bubbled around in the box. Another corner. We should be man marking absolutely everybody from our new defensive set piece routine. And that's a good claim from Wildsmith. To, to claim it on out there. Look at this again. We're making the shots. We're, we're getting the chances. Maybe it's just because our strike force is letting us down. I'm going to gamble here and suggest everybody else is going to have a good game and it's all going to be fine and everyone's going to be happy. Because Zahovic. Ah, oh, no. See, that's the problem. He can't play the complete forward row at all. And I don't think I want a deep lying forward in this formation because we don't have enough attack from the wings. It's only from one wing where we attack. So. Can Guigon play up there? No, not really in the set, in the complete forward role. Zahovic is going to come on for Guigon. That's the move we're going to do. He's coming on for his debut. Let's see what he can do. Shearer comes forward into Daka. Daka finds the space of Lozano. I thought he was going to be brought down. He gets his shot off. Good save from Will Smith. However, I think he was offside. Okay, Meite up front is just having an absolute shitter. So uh, I'm going to shove Zahovic up there, I think. I think that's what we're going to do. Gibbs White is the inside forward. We're going to put Zahovic up front, leave him as a complete forward, see if he can get into the game playing like that. We've rolled all of our dice very, very early, but I think we've got a chance. Glulak lays it back to Alvaro. Alvaro comes forward with it into Kalimov. Kalimov out to Lozano, and Lozano's been their danger man. He gets around Skulak, puts it into Daka. Daka's got two defenders in front, and Chera gets the wrong side of Josh De Silva. Shot is saved, and De Silva then makes a recovery tackle really well. Gibbs White looks to bring this forward. He's only got Zahovic in front of him, but thought he could dribble it all on his own uh, and just couldn't I mean our goalkeeper's having a great game back there De Silva into Ramsey Ramsey into Zahovic shoots just past the post didn't get enough bend on it good effort from LZ90 though okay I'm just going to tell Ramsey that he can um I want him to push further on 
Let's uh, encourage him to dribble. He's got good skills. He's got good technical ability. Let's get Aaron Ramsey dribbling on the ball a little bit more. Throw into Dynamo Zagreb. It goes back to Gomez into Gluhak. Gluhak comes forward to Kamara. Kamara gets a free run to the box. Great save again by Wildsmith. Lozano uses his acceleration to get there first, but it's cleared away by um, Sile. We are playing better. There's a clearance. It can't find Zahovic. Gomez will bring this down. He comes forward. They're playing a very fluid formation. Gomez is popping up all over the place. Kamara into Chara. Chara gets his shot off, and that goes past the post as well. It's a tough, tense game, this. It really is. Throw in De Silva to Ramsey. Zahovic is on the edge, but Ramsey tries to go around him. Can't win the foul. De Silva will surely fling this into the box. Ramsey. Ramsey's there. His cross is blocked. De Silva puts in a cross first time. Heads it away. Arejo shoots. It's blocked. And now they're going to bring it away with Kamara. We have got numbers back, but it looks like they're trying to play on the counter. Lozano puts the cross in, and Wildsmith can't stop it going behind for a corner, which is really annoying. Come on. We just need a good chance to fall to one of our attacking players, I think. Zahovic has got a debut goal in him. I can feel it. I can feel it. Wildsmith with a goal kick. It goes up to Velasinovic. Velasinovic up to Musa. Up to Arejo. Arejo comes forward with it. That's really poor. He's managed to bundle his way around the player, though. He's still going, Michel Arejo. Again, he's bundled into a man. Finds Zerga in a lot of space. He takes a shot. He's hit the post. What an effort from Tom Zerga. He's hit the post with an absolutely long-range bullet. And don't tell me that's a penalty. Oh, it's a penalty. This could be 3-1. It's surely going to wrap up the game. It's going to be Chara, I think. I think he's their penalty taker. It is Vlad Chara. Shoot, Will Smith goes the wrong way, but can't keep it out. Um, we're going to have to force the issue a little bit now, I think. We're going to have to get people pushing forward. I know you don't want to do it, Zerga, but you're going to be an inside forward on attack. Skulak, we need you to push wing back, uh, complete wing back on attack. De Silva, complete wing back on attack. Abdel Musa, half back. Michael Arejo, central midfielder on attack. And deep line playmaker, you can stay as that, Ramsey. In possession, let's go for a higher tempo. We'll do the overlap on both sides. Uh, in transition, we'll counter press. We'll leave all that as it is. We're going to play a really, really high line. We're going to press them. We're going to get stuck in and probably get a man sent off. But that's just that's just what we have to do in it. It's what we have to do in these circumstances. 3-1 down. Now we're relying on Dynamo to mess up in the league title race. And that is unreal. I mean, again, though, look how close it is. We're doing so well. For a team our start, our size, and our stature, we are playing so, so well. Come on. Two minutes to get two goals. I don't think it's going to happen. Very attacking. We've made some tactical tweaks. We've rolled all our subs and rolled all our dice. Lozano brings it down. Ramsey wins the ball but can't find Zahovic. Zahovic does pick it up though. He looks to feed in Zerga but Novak read the pass. Gomez goes over the top. This really high line is going to be caught out by Chara who shoots and it's 4-1. And that's that. We've conceded that one because we're pushing for it. We're pushing to try and get some goals and... We're not going to get them now, so we'll drop down, back down to positive, and we'll probably see this out as a 4-1 loss. Very annoying as Ramsey comes forward with it, lays it out to Skulak, into the box, he shoots, it's blocked. Is that a penalty? No, it's not. Shot blocked again. Ramsey picks up the rebound, back to Musa. Musa into Ramsey, out to Skulak. Skulak's shot again is blocked. That will fall, and there's a shot again that's blocked. We're not lacking confidence in, in front of goal, and when we get into the, the opportunities, it's just... We struggle to break some teams down. as That's a really poor cross from Skulak there. As Gomez looks to bring this away. Clears it up his line. And uh, with 10 seconds to go, our Dino Zagreb just going to rub salt in the wounds. De Silva with a great header away. And Gomez will just hold on. And they'll hold on to the ball. And there is the full-time whistle. And we lose 4-1. And it just goes to show that it's not going to be plain sailing to win this league. And I was hoping... I mean, I... I I can't decide whether we're meeting expectations of what I wanted from this save or not. Um, so I'm intrigued to see how we're going to do it. So there we go. 22 matches in a row without losing. Uh, and we've just lost the Dynamo 4-1. So I mean, what a way for it to end. But we're top goal scorers in the league with 57 goals in 29 matches. So we are... Well, I said we weren't scoring that many. But we, we clearly are scoring a good number of goals. But... I mean, yeah, there's still work to do. The squad is pretty big. We're paying a lot of wages to, to people on loan as well. So if we go and have a look at uh, contracts and go to wage, 
So the top two earners at our club are actually here um, on on loan, which is a bit of an issue. Um, and then so Aaron Ramsey's got you know his contract extension. Um, Pinar he'll be a starting player next year most likely. Vasilovic will be starting. Jack Will should be leaving the club. Morgan Gibbs White will be leaving the club. Although I'm tempted to bring him back in because I he's not played too much, but I have liked the way he's looked when he plays. He's quite direct and likes to get into the box, which is good. Um, Grigon will be here as well. Uh, De Silva, yeah, if we get a good bid for him, he might be on his way. We're going to be looking to buy. I already know what what I want to look for um, in the summer. We're going to have a new goalkeeper in, in Mosquero, which is great. We're going to be having um, a new... Um, we've got a good, sorry, not a new, we've got a good strike force options that we've got here. We've got lots of good options that we can use on the wings at the moment. Maybe a new right winger may be needed because Laughlin is still young and a bit inexperienced. And Zerga, although he's playing very well, is not good enough for that next level that we want in Europe, in my opinion. Uh, I think what we actually need to buy is I'm going to stick with this sort of formation. And I think it's this holding midfield role that we really need to invest in. Um, and I think that's what we've got to look out for. In the under-19s, we had a new youth intake, and none of it was anything spectacular. We had one highly rated uh, person to come in, which was this guy, Robert Zelinkin, Zelenika. Um We'll have to see how he gets on. Unambitious personality, though. Determination 5. I mean, it's not doesn't look like it's going to work out for him. Um, Stoic came in as well. Uh, a bit more, bit better. Bit balanced. Determination 8. So... Yeah, who knows? They might get a little run out here or there. But generally, we've got highly rated potential youth players. These are all includes all the loanees that are going to be moving on and leaving as well. So we've got quite a lot of high potential players, but a lot of them are unambitious, not determined, undetermined. We don't have like model professionals or highly determined, highly ambitious um, players like that. So yeah, that could be a problem. And that's I'm gutted that we've lost that game. I'm absolutely gutted. But it is, I, I'm, I've got to be honest, it's still a very good season. To get to group stage of the Champions League, the final of the Cup, which we will be heavy favourites for, um, and to be second and still possibly in a very good chance of winning the league will be great. So we'll have to see what happens. We have really missed Cabrera, who will be our starting striker next season when he's back and fit. We're going to trade him up to play the inside forward role as well, I think, because the more options we've got to play there, the better. Um, Roof... I feel a bit sorry for Roof. I've not really given him a chance. I mean, 11 games, 1 goal and 6.63. He's on a par with Paritin in his performance. But he won't be coming back to the club. But we will leave it there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, your support and everything is brilliant. I know a lot of you might not like or appreciate the Zahovic transfer, but I really, really like him as a player. Um, and it's all due to football manager, to be honest. All due to football manager. But, yeah, thank you so much for watching. But for now, I'm out. Cheers.